Greetings in the bonds of peace and welcome to Ani Isha. My name is Dr. Sean Lyons. I'm a forever student of the divine vision and revelation given to the founder of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, Dr. Henry Clifford Kimmel, who had his vision and revelation in the year of 1931 in the state of Ohio. After the establishment of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research in the state of California in the year of 1958, he proved these facts on three ecclesiastical peace missions around the world to every religious organization and school of the highest learning. As a result of his divine vision and revelation, he transcribed God, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. This publication was given to every queen and king of the earth and their progenies, president elects, and every religious organization from 1960 to 1976. Along with a Holy Name Version Bible containing the original name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, revised by Aiden Trainer, an Italian Hebrew. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. His divine title is Elohim. The name of his son is Yahshua, the Messiah. Within the inscription, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley revealed to the world the threefold pattern Yahweh Elohim revealed to Moses upon Mount Sinai in the year of 1490 BY. and later commanded Moses to build one in the wilderness of Sinai, which was the establishment of cardinal ordinances. After 40 years in the wilderness of Sinai, Yahweh Elohim had commissioned Moses to place his hand upon Yahshua, the son of Nun, in the audience of the children of Israel to give him charge to lead the people to the promised land. Before Moses had entered into Mount Nebo, 33 days after Moses had entered into Mount Nebo, Eleazar and the sons of Aaron, bearing the Ark of the Covenant, placed the soles of their feet upon the river Jordan, and it opened up like an unto the Red Sea. Yahshua, the son of Nun, had commissioned 12 men of valor to retrieve 12 stones from the river Jordan as a witness to the children of Israel that Yahweh Elohim had opened up the Red Sea as he did the river Jordan to give the children of Israel their inheritance and fulfill his promise to Father Abraham. Yahshua the son of Nun had numbered the children of Israel. Confirmed the covenant of circumcision of Abraham's seed entering into Canaan's land to the cherubim Michael, the captain of the host of Yahweh, before their 40 year conquest and Israel inheritance. 480 years after the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt, the foundation of this temple was laid seven years to the completion of this temple as the seven days of creation and three years to the birth so that all the instruments upon the tabernacle upon mount zion will be placed within the tabernacle or the temple of king solomon upon mount moriah this is a total cycle of a 490 years The same divine service that was carried out within the wilderness of Sinai 
was carried out within the temple of King Solomon for 33 years before the invasion and destruction of the temple by King Shishak, the king of Egypt. John, on the Isle of Patmos, bared witness that Yahshua told the Pharisees and scribes of his time, destroy this temple, and in three days, I'll raise it again. But he spoke of the temple of his body. In like manner, John also bared record that when the centurion guard had pierced Yahshua within his side, that forthwith came blood and water. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, 14th verse through the 15th verse, reveals how Yahshua, the Messiah, had offered himself one time with his eternal spirit unto the Father to remove sin in the flesh through the operation of his death, burial, and resurrection, and pouring out his Holy Spirit in AD 33. The 120 persecuted for the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua, being the Messiah fulfilling the law of Moses, was persecuted for seven years to AD 40, which allowed the blessing to fall upon the Gentile nation to fulfill his promise to Father Abraham that all the families of the earth would be blessed through his seed, singular. Yahshua, the Messiah. These illustrations can be found on pages 42 in the first 1961 edition and page 69 in the 12th edition called the Comparative Analyst of Moses and John of the Creation. Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley gave us rules of engagement pertaining to his vision that the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. That being said, study to show thyself improved. A workman who needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And may the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, teach you all things. My aims and objectives are to help you find Yahshua, the Messiah in your heart and in your mind. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 through 20. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 6. My second aim and objective is, is to show you how Yahweh wrote his law in your inward parts. Jeremiah 31, 31. Hebrews 8, 10 and 13. My third aim and objective is to help you discern the son of Elohim and the son of the devil. First John, third chapter. First John, fourth chapter. Um, scriptures, I mean, um, verses one through 10. My fourth aim and objective is to show and prove that Yahshua is the true Elohim, whom Yahweh have sent. First John, five and 20. John, 17 and three. At this particular time, we will have prayer, our scripture reading, announcements, our script ascertainment, perception, and direction exam. We will have a speaker, and our doxology, which is Romans, um, the 16th chapter, verses 25 to 27. <clears throat> and at this particular time, um, I will be giving you a prayer for this evening's class. Heavenly Father, once again, it is always an honor and a pleasure to come before you humbly, to be able to have something to say pertaining to your purpose, your pattern, and your plan, and to reveal the things pertaining to the kingdom, your kingdom, the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for life itself. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for being an Elohim who hears your servants, that answers prayers expediently. I just thank you for your mercy. 
your compassion. And I just thank you for your purpose. With these humble prayers, I ask in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh Elo, which is Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading for today will be Acts, the 10th chapter, which will be read out of the Holy Name Virgin Bible, critically compared with ancient authorities, various manuscripts revised by A.B. Train. Acts, the 10th chapter, read as follows. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian man, a devoted man and one that feared Elohim with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Elohim always. He saw a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day and an angel of Yahweh coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, sir? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before Elon. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, who house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee thou oughtest to do. And when the angel was spoken to Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while he made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descend unto him, as it had been a great sheep fastened at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Yahweh, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what Yahweh has cleansed, thou call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter wondered at this vision which he had seen, should mean, behold, the men which were sent forth from Cornelius lay made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were logged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one that feareth Elohim, and of good report among all the nation of the Yahudai, was warned of Elohim by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and logged them 
and on the morrow, Peter went away with him and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and their friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter took him up saying, stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, ye know how it is an unlawful thing for a man who is a Yahudai to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But Yahweh hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without hesitation as soon as I was sent for. I ask therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me? And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayers is heard and thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of Elona. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside. Who then he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done thou art come. Now therefore are we all present before Elon to hear all things that command thee of Elohim. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that Yahweh is no respecter of person. But in every nation he that feareth him and work righteousness is accepted with him. The word which Yahweh sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yahshua the Messiah, he is the mighty one. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism of John the Baptist preached. How Yahweh anointed Yahshua of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the adversary. For Yahweh was with him. And we are witness of these things. And he did both in the land of the Yahudai and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him Yahweh raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen beforehand by Yahweh, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained by Yahweh the judge of the quick and dead, and to give all the prophets witness, and through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sins. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on the nationality also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify Yahweh. Then Peter answered, then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we, and commanded them to be baptized in the name of Yahshua. Then pray they him to tarry certain days. I have read to you Acts, the 10th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This particular time, we would have our announcements. Um, 
uh, our announcements um, are very minimum. Um, I've spoken with Elder um, Van Hook. Um, she had enlightened me that uh, she has had a very, very busy, busy schedule and that she will be um, joining us soon as soon as her uh, schedule uh, clears for her. Um, no announcements, no emails sent from the brethren. So I will be proceeding with our apologies. Geography takes us this evening to Jerusalem, where it says that another sinkhole has opened up in a parking lot outside a hospital in Jerusalem and has swallowed up several parked cars. It says no injuries were reported after police investigated the site. Our next ecology geographical location takes us to China where it says that in China, that at least a dozen buzzing drones says it monitors, uh, it monitors, monitors them around the clock. Wherever they go, they're, or, they're escorted by police. It says, and when they eat or sleep, they're watched by millions. Now, I know you're probably wondering, you're saying, what is he talking about? Who's being watched? What is, it, what is it talking about? Well, it says that for more than a week, it says China has been gripped by a new internet sensation. It says a herd of 15 marandering elephants who are large, lost, and wrecking havoc in the country southwest of China. It says millions have turned into live streams of the elephants, which have trekked more than 500 kilometers, which is 310 miles, a cross country since escaping from a, nat a nature reserve in South China last year. It says the elephants trample crops, causing more than a million dollars worth of damages and roam through towns, prompting local residents to stay inside. It says viewers are particularly charmed by the herd's three calves. It says, including one who was born during the epic journey. It says it is still under, it is still unclear why the elephants are making the journey north. It says that, um, Professor Zhang Lai, a wildlife biologist at Beijing Normal University said, the only way to prevent a future elephant exodus is to restore their, habit, their habitat and protect natural resources, according to Global Times. So now you have these elephants, man. You got 15 element, uh, ele elements, elephants, excuse me. <laughs> 15 elephants that are traveling all the way across from South China, headed north. And man, these elephants, man, the way that they are taking this trek and the way that they follow them on uh, using these drones, man, you know, it's a, uh, I mean, you ought to see how, first off, you ought to see how big these drones are. And then, not only that, how that the police are monitoring them and the way that they're looking out for them, uh, 
it's just really, really, really phenomenal, you know, how they're going about doing this. And it says that they were uh, in Southwest China. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go to the chart, okay? And I'm trying to show you, uh, you know, we use our ecology. What we do is, is that we come to the chart and then we use this as um, basically, this is like our, our compass. So we come and it says that they, they came from Southwest and they are headed North, okay? You know? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, when we look at the principles based upon the things of what we have been talking about pertaining to uh, this gospel, man, you know, it's just really, really phenomenal. You know, we was talking about um, our last class, we was talking about uh, things pertaining to uh, what was manifesting within the heavens because we was looking forward uh, to the eclipse that's getting ready to come up uh, tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a solar mm -hmm. eclipse. You know, that's exciting news. And we know that every time there's something manifests within the heavens, that something, there's a reflect that's going to manifest from the earth, right? See? So mm -hmm. just like how that when we had the uh, lunar eclipse that happened on the 26th of um, May, that, that there was a reflect uh, that had manifested and happened with that. So as well, we are looking for a reflect to re-manifest with this um, solar eclipse that we're getting ready to have, uh, have tomorrow. But be that as it may, um, going to these things. When it was talking, when we was talking about the eclipse, and we were sharing with you how that if you look right here within this compartment right here, okay, we explained to you based upon uh, how NASA had gave, given us the information and said that a solar eclipse is when that you have the Earth, and you have the Moon, okay, and it blocks the Sun. So if you're looking right here, see, this is showing you how that we showed you how that this is principle pertaining to the moon. And then we have the earth manifesting right here, see? And then we have the sun that's right behind it. Because so what you're looking at right here is a manifestation of an eclipse when you're seeing the new earth. Yahshua fulfilling the principles of the moon. We showed you how there with these particular uh, shapes with the dove and, and how that the cloud around the dove is, is, is correlated to the moon phases of the moon so that we can understand uh, what was taking place um, pertaining to what the Messiah had to do based upon the laws of the creator pertaining to how it applied to uh, Moses and the uh, laws that were given to the children of Israel. And then we understand how that was fulfilled pertaining to what John the Revelator had seen, how he seen a woman clothed within the sun, um, 12 stars upon uh, her crown and then the moon that was manifesting up under her feet, see? So this mm -hmm. one that's talking about these things, we look at these principles and it allows us to be able to come to the chart to see what is being shared um, within uh, uh, um, news, okay? So now when we were talking about how, uh, uh, we was talking about the new earth state and then we was talking about how the coloration here to show and reveal to you how that the coloration was revealing how that this was new ground pertaining to after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. When he went to his death, his um, burial, and his resurrection, okay? Picking up these principles. And we showed you that how the dark colored ground was in relation to how that it was a representation of the old man, okay? Going all the way back to the, uh, to the uh, first laws and statutes and judgments that were given unto the children of Israel until we come to the knowledge what was written over there within the prophets over there in Jeremiah 31, 31, saying that Yahweh will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, not after the old covenant, which law was one that they broke, but he will make one to where he will put within their inner parts to where they won't break. You understand? So we're seeing that how the dark coloration is, uh, is a representation of the old man or the Hebrews of under the law, and then this is the representation of that new man. And so together with the colors being combined and showing forth how that we have the Jews and the Gentiles, and this being one new man, which is the Messiah. So that is what is representation of what you're seeing here based upon what we read to you within our scripture lesson, as well as coming back, showing you the principles here. And then to take you back to uh, the vision of our founder, 
and show you the principles <laughs> in its origin. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, I, I looked up the uh, solar eclipse. Uh -huh. It's uh, going to happen to equivalent of 2 a.m. our time. So we won't be able to see it, but that's, that's what time the event is going to happen. Okay, beautiful. So we'll, we'll be asleep when, it, when they are getting a chance to look at it over there in uh, India. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That is really, really beautiful. So it's our morning and their sunset. Right. Wow. So we won't, we won't be able to see it at all. Yeah. Okay. So now this is uh, going here and this will be revealing um, the principle that we were talking about when we were talking about uh, colorations and then the, uh, the new earth uh, mm -hmm. pertaining to the um, um, resurrection of the Messiah. When we were coming here and we were showing you uh, the coloration pertaining to how when the Gentile were being uh, going through their conversion based upon what we just read to you with the uh, scripture. So this is showing you how this is the coloration of the uh, new ground. And then based upon how when Peter had to make his um, uh, his confirmation, okay, based upon what happened with the uh, Gentile nation. See, the brethren with him and they had to confirm as well when he went before the council, how that he testified, how that the, the uh, the Gentile nations have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, just like how the Jews did when the gospel was preached unto them. So this is the reason why that Peter had to come here and reconfirm that in front of the council because of what Peter had said that um, it is unlawful for a Jew or a Yahutai to be amongst the nations in closed quarters. Okay, that was a breaking of the law. So therefore, this is showing you how that this is the old man by the coloration here. See, the gray is a representation of Yahshua being in the background, okay? And then we have here the coloration of the new man, see? And then here is the same showing you the role of persecution that is manifesting here is up under the old man or the Yahudites or the Jews up under the law, see? So mm -hmm. this show you how the colorations and how they were applied there to the, uh, to the chart of the Isha, see? And so... Here again, we come back to show you the same principle here, and then show you the uh, place of origin of where we're talking about pertaining to how when the Messiah is resurrected there. Then you see how you have this robe coming here pertaining to the 40. This was the 40 days up until the time that Yahshua told him to wait for words from one high. And then we understand that pertaining to that. Uh, picked up a 50 principle when they had received um, Pentecost on June 6th. What we have been doing is giving you a day uh, or class by class uh, time um, uh, on the uh, sacred calendar as well as the uh, prophetic calendar showing you the, the sequential time of what's going on right now pertaining to the history of what we're looking at on these charts here. See? So, um, there's one thing that I really wanted to, uh, to come back to uh, when we were showing uh, not only how the uh, ground being the, was the representation of the new earth, but when you come uh, to the chart, see, one thing that was really, really fascinating to me, that when they were talking about on the chart how the elephants were headed north, find that fascinating? Mm -hmm. Now look mm -hmm. at this right here. You see this elephant? right here on the chart? Mm-hmm. Now, which way is he headed? North. That's right. When we go here to the chart and we look where John is, look at that, mm -hmm. north. Now see, yep. now, now man, we're reading stuff that is written in the news. We don't write news. All mm -hmm. we have is the pattern of Yahweh Elohim. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. I said that these elephants, these elephants were headed north. See? Now on the chart, are they headed north? And then it That's said right. south, says the southwest. 
Now, this is the sunrise, okay? Now, here, we understand that where the sun is at this particular time, it is in its zenith, see? Uh -huh. And it is picking up when it is in its zenith that it is the ninth hour. And this is the ninth hour of the time um, when the sun is in its zenith, see? And it is picking up uh -huh. the time to reveal to you how when it was talking about the southwest, so just by the sun being within its zenith and it is picking up the ninth hour, okay? And we're showing you Southwest principles, see? And then looking how that, this is where they came from, coming from Southwest. Now I'm not doing the charts no justice. I told you I'm always pointing. And oh, I, I thought you were pointing point at the elephants, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, I was, I was pointing at, at the elephants, but what I was doing was I was pointing at, at Southwest. Like we was on the airplane, didn't know Southwest going somewhere, see? I told you, I'm always pointing and I ain't doing no justice to these charts, but I just wanted to show our viewers what was on the charts so that they know what we're talking about. So as I was saying, that from here to, uh -huh. okay, that when we look at the uh, the time frame, that it is picking up the, um, the third to the sixth hour, okay? Uh -huh. And then we understand that this is the... Uh, the ninth hour, all right? Now, he's picking up all these times, okay? Mm -hmm. And so this is allowing us, when, when it's talking about the, um, I'm sorry, this is picking up the ninth hour because it was picking up the zenith, okay? So okay. You know, in time, you know, and we're looking at the time of the sun and we're looking at um, things pertaining to, remember the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. We have to understand that there is a twilight, okay? So when we're looking at time, you gotta make sure that we're using, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the right hour, and we're within the right watch pertaining to the hours that we're in, okay? Because this is the hour's time. So as I said, that this being the ninth hour, this is picking up the zenith, okay? Of where the sun is at his zenith at three o'clock um, in the afternoon when it is the most brightest or the hottest, okay? This is when it's at its highest descent before it is going into its descent or going to its set where it sets in the West. Okay. So that's the reason why that I'm picking up these principles. And just to show you that when we say it's Southwest, when we're picking up the principles, how it rises in the East and sets in the West, and then we're looking at from where they came from and then where they're headed. See, man, that's phenomenal to me. That is yeah. just phenomenal. See, there's no way that them animals could be headed in the same direction as the elephant on the chart is headed, man, unless it was by divine, see, intervention, see. Mm -hmm. Let's know that Yahweh is doing this. You understand what I'm saying? And all mm -hmm. we have is pattern and everything to show you that everything must testify, okay, to Yahweh Elohim's given pattern, see? And it is talking about the more perfect, greater tabernacle, not so much as the one that Yahweh Elohim had Moses to build within uh, the wilderness, see, to establish the apothecary, see? Yeah. So you know, this is just something that was very, very interesting. You know, when we come and we do our ecologies, see, these are the things that we come and we talk about to show you how that the creator is bearing witness, see, of himself and his vision and his revelation, see? And that's all that we're doing. And so, you know, what you do is, is you go and look at these news articles that we're talking about for yourself. Don't take our word for it, okay? Because, see, we are, are a, a, a research organization dedicated to showing proof the existence of Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. So since we are a research organization, and we're dedicated to showing proof the existence of our creator. Everything in his creation is his to prove his own truth and his own gospel, see? Mm -hmm. Oh, and another thing too, while I'm, I'm on that, see, before I take my seat. Now, it said something pertaining to in our first ecology, and let us go back here to the chart. Uh, and it was speaking about up here in the now we shared with you uh, the principles about um, the sinkhole, okay? And let us go back to um, the vision uh, of the founder. Mm -hmm. And go back and pick up these principles here. 
that is manifesting here within the Garden of Eden. And we are talking about the principles that are manifesting right here. When we are here, and we are showing you how that we reveal to you how this dot right here not only represents how death came into the world and how death reigned from Adam until Moses, but not after the similitude of Adam's transgression, but as well that this dot is a representation to show you how that the whole entire creation is a will, okay? And this mm -hmm. widow's son, all right? So that's yep. it also a representation of what that dot is a representation of, okay? And then we understand that with the, um, this is the degenerating chart and with the uh, plate right up underneath it, which is the regeneration chart, which is showing you how that the same sinkhole that Adam had to go in pertaining to how death came into the world was the one that Yahshua, see, came up out of to fulfill the principles here. Okay, to take away the death that was manifested within the world to bring back the principles of life. Okay, so uh, with that, that it says that um, another uh, Cinco had manifested. Now, the first one manifested within Mexico that we were yeah. talking about. Okay, mm -hmm. and so now we have one that's manifesting um, in Jerusalem. Now, when we come here to the chart and we look at how we come here and we pick up these principles here, and this is uh, principles pertaining to King Solomon's temple, Herodian's temple, Zerubbabel's temple, any temple that you would like to use pertaining to time within the ages and dispensations that's applicable to the body of Yahshua Messiah, as well as King Solomon's temple, okay? Now, mm -hmm. along with that, we showed you that here, uh, when we were revealing how that this uh, these plates that manifest on the um, pattern plan of salvation chart, we showed you how that this was the veil that was rent in twain after Yahshua had went through his death, all right? His death, his burial, and his resurrection. That this mm -hmm. was the station how the veils rent in twain, showing you principally how you have the dark manifesting right here, and then all the light principles are the creation manifesting here, okay? Separated and showing you light from darkness, all right? Now, as well we understand that these are being worlds, all right, that were fulfilled by the Messiah. That when we come and we see that how they are circles, that we can take the principles to see how they can manifest the same principle as a sinkhole because of the principle of this here, all right? That is a fulfillment or related to what's manifesting here by it saying the crucifixion or burial of the Messiah. And we understand that the principles of what the Messiah had to go through all right, when it was pertaining to his death, burial, and resurrection. So when we come here and we see how all this had manifested up here, see, within the most holy place, see, and then we see these principles to where we can see how that the sinkhole, all right, the true sinkhole had to manifest right here in Jerusalem. See? Uh-huh. Right here. Now, it said that it happened at a hospital, all right, and cars were sinking into uh, uh, this hole, and it was at a hospital, this sinkhole, all right? Now, a hospital is a place to where they help bring people back to life, all right? And so yeah. then when you look at this principle here that Yahshua Messiah had went through his death, see, to do what? Fulfill the principle of death to give us what? Life. You understand what I'm saying? So that put that same sinkhole right where it was supposed to be right there in Jerusalem, and it was pertaining to Yahshua Messiah based upon its location of where it was. You understand what I'm saying? Being at a hospital. You understand, you understand the principle? See? Yeah. Save people's lives. He is the savior of life. See? And that's his, his sinkhole that he came up out of. So this is the reason why that it had to manifest within Jerusalem. Just simple. I keep saying it over and over again just to make sure that the principles are clear and fluent so that we can see how in relation pertaining to um, news articles that are manifesting themselves um, on a daily basis, how that they are manifesting um, themselves within the vision and revelation that was given unto our founder as well as was, as was given unto me, see? And so this takes us here um, continuously um, and we're just gonna go and show you and we're gonna come here to uh, the calendar 
and see where we are in time. See, uh, according to Yahweh's timetable, and we're still in the month of Savan. Uh, Pentecost had just had just happened a few days ago. See, um, so that puts us right here, um, and that is makes it, it's the ninth. It is the um, third day, okay, after um, Yahweh Elohim had spoke down unto the children of Israel, and it is also the third day um, of the departure um, out of the land of Egypt, 40 days in the wilderness of Sinai. So today is the third day pertaining to the children of Israel were supposed to be in the wilderness only for 40 days until they had crossed mm -hmm. over um, into Canaan's land to receive their inheritance. But because of their disobedience, it was one year for a day. That principle uh -huh. manifested right here. Now, this is the third day of that. Yeah. This is picking up. This is the days of, 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 of when the children of Israel had cleansed themselves because we had to pick up the, uh, the uh, Pentecost line. And so after that, what happens is that we got to go 50 more days again until Pentecost <laughs> manifests themselves over again. You understand what I'm saying? Because this line only goes up to 50 days. Every 50 days, it restarts itself. All right. This is our eternal time. So when we look at uh, where we are pertaining to the sacred calendar, is revealing to us that how we are in a savan, third sacred day, third sacred yeah. day, and we are on the ninth day. So now, yeah. see what we're looking at that now, this is the third day. Now we're looking at how things are re-manifesting itself over again. And this is the third day pertaining to the 40 days that the children of Israel were only supposed to be within the wilderness, see? Uh -huh. And so now on the fourth day, see, <clears throat> ready to have an eclipse now ain't yeah. that phenomenal the fourth mm -hmm. day that they were only supposed to be in the wilderness for 40 days which gives them 36 more days okay yeah perfect man huh mm -hmm. and then hold on it's the fourth day right yeah now see man <laughs> i know they say this man is crazy oh and i picked up the name of that uh hospital uh-huh uh, the name of the hospital is called Sher Zedek Hospital. Sher Zedek Hospital. Wow. Break Sherry, down. Sherry Zedek. Break, break down the meaning of that. It means gates of justice in English. Whew. Boy. And, uh, it was, and it was caused by uh, underground tunnels, the sinkhole. Mm-hmm. So... Wow. Yeah, I, I was I was looking up, do a little research and throw that out there. Hey, and you know what? That's a beautiful thing because what that does is that helps see um, <clears throat> that helps confirm the gospel. You understand? Yeah. You the name of that hospital meant gates of what? Gates of justice. Gates of justice. Now, isn't justice one of the attributes of, 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 of Yahshua? Uh-huh. Yes, it is. You understand what I'm saying? Gates of justice. Now, he said that upon this rock, I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You understand? Mm -hmm. And it will not prevail against the gates of justice. Do you understand? Yeah. And people oh. miss, it doesn't say gate singular, it says gates for plural. Right. And we understand that pertaining to that, we're going to go right back over there that there were what, 12 gates? Uh-huh. Yes. And, and yeah, you're, you're saying it from scripture. Scripture mm -hmm. says it in plural. It doesn't say it in singular. Exactly. Exactly. See? Exactly. Now, see, all in principle, see, is a verification. And guess what? All that is is to the praise of Yahshua the Messiah. See, there ain't no praise mm -hmm. there given none to Dr. Lyons. There ain't no praise given to Dr. Johnson. All praise is given unto Yahshua the Messiah based upon these principles and these facts, using his pattern and letting you know where we are in time. See? Yep. And these are the beautiful things, you know what I'm saying? Man, and, 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 and hold on. I, I have to go there. <laughs> now, see, now, see, now hold on, Doc. Now, you just spoke another language to me. You just spoke in Hebrew to me and broke down Hebrew, and my native tongue is English. And you, mm -hmm. spoke, you spoke Hebrew to me and then broke it down in the English tongue. Mm hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Now that happened as well on the day of Pentecost. You remember when uh, Peter uh, was sitting up speaking? 
And then all the people that came from all these different nations says, why is it that every man, you some saying, heareth, you some saying, their words by this man's tongue? They said they uh -huh. be off new wine. <laughs> and Peter says, no. He says, it's not the time nor the hour for one to be drinking wine. You understand what I'm saying? That this is the gift of the Holy Spirit. See? Yep. And all that we sit up manifested and sitting up sharing with the people. You understand what I'm saying? That by research, that we are a research organization dedicated to show proof the existence of Yahweh or Elohim, how he really is and actually exists. But as well, like I said, man, that we have an obligation as being ministers, see, to show, mm -hmm. to show the viewers how to do proper research. Yep. Okay. And it doesn't take much. Just proper research so that you could see, okay, how that Yahshua will be preaching his own gospel. And like he says, let heaven and earth be silent before him. See? Mm -hmm. So therefore, you see that location, how he chose that particular hospital and the name of that hospital? Pretending yeah. to what we have been talking about? And, mm -hmm. and that is no coincidence based upon the thing that what we've been talking about and the things that we've been preaching and then all the principles, man. That, there just ain't no coincidence. It can't be that unerring, man. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'd be so excited. That's why I'd be so juiced, man. And, 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 and things like what you have just brought to our love piece. You understand what I mean? All it yeah. does is further give a proper foundation of the things of what we have been talking about and sharing with our viewers. You understand? And that's mm -hmm. what a minister of Yahweh is supposed to do. And that's how you pick up the baton. You understand what I'm saying? And be able to come and pick up right after, see, the uh, first speaker. You understand what I'm saying? That's our job and obligation unto this teaching, unto this gospel, not opposed to that's my brother and him having my back. But that too, you understand what I'm saying? And not just on a physical blood nature. We're talking about spiritually and psychologically so. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the importance of that. That was just beautiful, uh, Dr. Johnson. And thank you mm -hmm. so much for that testimony, see? And that just goes mm -hmm. to show how, how the scriptures are being fulfilled again. How that it says, two or more gathered in my name. And there I am there in the midst. See? Mm-hmm. Now, that brings us right here. Now, you, now, we just picked up the principles and we shared with you how that pertaining to the uh, children of Israel coming up out of the land of Egypt, how that we picked up the principles that we are on, uh, we are on the ninth day of Savannah. All yeah. right? And we're revealing to you how that tomorrow will be the fourth day of mm -hmm. 40 days that the children of Israel were supposed to come up out of the land of Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. The fourth day. And when we're picking up that pertaining to it being the fourth day, that we understand uh, what happened on the fourth day of creation, how Yahweh Elohim had put the sun, moon, and stars within the sky. All right? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, the beautiful part of it is is that the principle of it being, <laughs> man, just let me calm down first off. I'm just so excited. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the son. Mm -hmm. Talking about the man, which is Yahshua. And then as well, it's picking up the principle of how it's picking up the son, the man, and the tree, picking up all the same principles of what had manifested back in the realm of eternity on the sixth day of creation when the man was created. See? And I'm thinking you're in a house and I'm just pointing away. Nobody can see what I'm pointing at. <laughs> oh, I now, I keep now hold on. June 6th. All right? Day of Pentecost for man. All right? Six mm -hmm. is picking up the principle of man. Okay? Four is picking up the principle of how the sun, moon, and stars was placed within the sky. It's the fourth day. All right. And we understand that pertaining to June 6th, that the spirit was poured out in the hearts and minds of man. When Yahweh Elohim picking up the principles, how Yahweh Elohim has spoke down into the children of Israel when they had to meet up at the mountain. 
okay, at the plateau of the mountain. This is an essence of a fulfillment of all things manifesting simultaneously since we are in the spirit now, okay? And when we're in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, all right, that all these principles see perpetuate nonstop, okay? So what I'm saying is that Pentecost and Yahweh speaking down um, from the mountain, all that is happening simultaneously within the spirit because it already had taken place. And then with Pentecost and all that other stuff, we have to look at these facts and factor them in with the equation too. So mm -hmm. as I said, we are, <clears throat> we're looking at an eclipse that's picking up the fourth day of creation when the sun came in the sky. And then yeah. they picking up the man and then Yahshua being the first fruits of those resurrect. So now what happened is that everything that is going to manifest tomorrow is manifesting the same principles that had manifested on the sixth day of creation, man. And that is fascinating mm. to me, man. That is beautiful and that is phenomenal to me, man. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when we look at the chart and when we look at the vision, man, and we come right here, We come right here where it says 4,000, uh, 4,000, 4, the year, 4,000 a.m. or Yahweh's fourth day of creation. All right? We're picking up the principle four. So, now, mm -hmm. the 10th is the 10th, okay, of June, of Savan, but it is the fourth day of when the children of Israel were so only supposed to be within the wilderness for 40 days. Yeah. Picking up a 4,000. Why? Because it was only four days. It's picking up a principle of a 40. All right. 400, 4,000. And we understand that zero is a placeholder. Okay. Yeah. And I'm looking at how many years ago that this was a manifestation of when this took place and when Yahweh said that this shall be the first day of the year unto you. Yeah, that was over 4,000 years ago, but still picking up the same principles, man. You know what I mean? And then the principles where we just picked up with that other ecology, man, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I'll be blown away because, man, that is too precise, okay? And can't uh -huh. nobody, can't nobody have no chart or nothing you understand what i'm saying that a person say that he drew up that is uh applicable to not only the news okay but then the scriptures as well man that that's phenomenal man mm -hmm. that is phenomenal phenomenal see and and it's like this if we didn't have what we have to be able to understand that these things are about yahweh elohim and his holy spirit Man, it, that would be um, kind of spooky. You understand? Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because that is the unexplained. How could all these um, things manifest, or, or we call them, um, in, a, in essence, what I'm trying to say is, is, how could all these things keep happening or be happening within the news and still be applicable, you know, saying, to what these gentlemen are talking about, man? That, that, uh -huh. that, that just does not happen. It just does not happen. But I'm, you know, this is just a part of the gospel, man. Like I say that when, you know, when we're going over our ecologies and we're looking at straight facts, man, and we are following the uh, timeline of Yahweh Elohim, we're using his timetable, we're using his dispensation and ages, we're using his hours. You understand what I mean? We're using his watches. Okay. And, and man, everything, everything is as he says it is as he says it is his words don't come back void hey and and what we're doing is we're witnessing to that fact in every in every way see in every way so now um i'll be going to uh or uh last ecology for the evening and um i really really uh you know with this one here 
I want to be very thorough and extensive as well, because this um, ecology here was, um, if you pay any attention to my 42nd um, lecture and you hear this uh, ecology, um, what this would be doing is, is pretty much giving you the sanction and permission from on high to go forth based upon the things that um, I had discussed in um, my 42nd lecture. So uh, what I will be doing is, is that um, me and Dr. Johnson will be sharing with you um, this ecology and we will be breaking it down according to the vision and the scriptures so that you can get an understanding of this particular ecology, the prayer that was said and that particular lecture and how Yahweh has given the answer pertaining to that particular prayer. So now this ecology uh, geographically takes us to Pakistan, India. Um, this incident happened Monday, um, June 6th. Okay. See? And so therefore, in Pakistan, India, it says that dozens of passengers were killed and several others injured after a train collision in southern Pakistan on Monday morning. The Sai Seed, Saeed, express train collided with the Malat express train in Sin Providence, Sindhi Providence, I hope I pronounced that properly. It says between railway station, according to railway officials. Hmm. Now, a while back, we shared with you um, some ecologies that had happened and manifested, I do believe in um, San Jose, California, pertaining to when we had uh, some things that take place within California that wasn't so pleasant. Um, and then it was principle behind um, an explosion and then uh, something happening at a railroad station as well. So what we do is that we always look at things um, based upon um, past tense um, within the colleges as well as present tense, okay? Um, and one thing too, uh, we wanna say this too, um, we have to keep in mind um, that we do not see any pleasure uh, in death or anybody getting hurt. Um, and our heart goes out to uh, India in their time um, of need and, you know, in a critical time like this, okay? And we want to uh, first and foremost send our regards and our condolences, you know, and um, our, our empathy and sympathy, you know, to this um, particular situation um, and also the families, okay? Uh, people mm -hmm. had lost their lives. Uh, we send our condolences to the families and, um, to the people who were injured. Um, and I say that because pertaining to the things that we shared with you, that we must keep in mind that everybody that um, who are, I would say like this, who are victims um, of this crisis, we have to keep in mind that they are God's people. They are Yahweh's creation. Um, we're not saying that our creator is the author of confusion or he is a uh, killer or murderer or anything of that particular nature. What we are trying to convey to you is that conditions that happen within the world, um, things like this are for people to have empathy and compassion for one another as people and to truly understand how precious life is, okay? And then in regards to those that lost their lives, um, in regards to hope that they were in good standing with the creator so that they will have eternal life and glorification with him. See, just be that as, yeah. you know, you always want to wish the betterment upon any nation of people that there is upon the face of the earth, okay? 
and you know we're not being judgmental pertaining to uh, their religious beliefs or whatever. We are looking at the situation at hand and we're trying to extract principles from what happened pertaining to the gospel and the preaching of Yahshua Messiah's kingdom. So that's all that we're trying to do. Um, and we're not trying to take anything on the negative to reap uh, glorification based upon the things that are happening within the world. That's not what we are doing or trying to do. We're just looking at the things that are, that are happening within the world. Uh, and we are trying to get a spiritual understanding pertaining to the creator's purpose as of why they happen, okay? And then what's going to be uh, the reflect futuristically based upon the events that took place, okay? So I just wanted those things to be um, understood. So now um, getting back, and now just the reason why I say that is because I want to get back to the principles of, of the details that took place um, in this event is what we look at spiritually. So of what it's really saying opposed to the characters, um, mm -hmm. which, are, which we look at um, as sacrifices um, as Yahshua the Messiah was, see? So it says um, here, it says at least 45 people are dead and officials are working to rescue at least 17 people who remain trapped. Now, here it says um, that at least 45 people were dead. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna continue to read and then I'm gonna, go, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run the ramifications after I finish so that all the principles will be there and then I can you know, go back. It says that, uh, that Ed High Rescue Services says so far that 23 people have been rescued. It says rescue workers are battling the elements with dust and temperatures up to 44 degrees Celsius, around 111 degrees Fahrenheit, recorded <laughs> on Monday afternoon, okay? Mm. So, <clears throat> so now how we look at this based upon the principles that were stated in this um, article, that when we come here to the chart, that's It said that um, 45 people, okay? And we come here to this physical, it says that 45 physical people, okay, were, were killed, okay? In this particular um, train accident, all right? Mm -hmm. we come here and we see how on this particular tree here, let me come so I can, um, reveal to the viewers what we're talking about. I want to make sure I can focus in. And here on the chart, that when we come to this particular tree here, And it says how we got Satan's ministers and we got three frogs manifesting right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it says how one of the frogs are the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. Another one is the Roman, <laughs> Roman, Roman uh, Catholicism. And the other one is the uh, Protestants. Okay, mm -hmm. these are religious organizations that are all up under uh, the Pope of Rome, okay, pertaining to religion. Now, the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research is not up under uh, Roman Catholicism or up under the auspices of the Roman Catholic Church. 
Nope. In essence, uh, the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, based upon the three ecclesiastical peace missions that we went on, was one of the uh, one of the places that we went to, to where we preached the gospel, to where the Roman Catholic Church could not uh, refute none of the things pertaining to the divine vision of revelation of our founder that has us up, up standing for still 90 years, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Unscathed, all right? And so therefore, we understand that when we're looking at the principle of all these stars, these falling stars, okay? And we see how we have the serpent um, right here and all these stars that are falling uh, behind this uh, king, or this image of uh, so-called Pope of Rome. We're seeing how the stars are falling behind the sepulchers, okay? And then we're, we're mm -hmm. understanding that these are the demons, okay, that was following uh, the uh, the dragon, and this is just one third host that are manifesting themselves on the earth plane, okay? So now, when we understand and when we're going all the way back to the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, how everything has went back to what we understand uh, principally how things were within the garden, based upon how everything had manifested with Yahshua the Messiah within Jerusalem, being within the most holy place, according to the uh, Mosaic Trek or the uh, um, tabernacle in the more perfect, greater tabernacle of Yahweh Elohim. So now mm -hmm. with the thing is that when we see how we got these three frogs or these ministers upon this tree, which is the tree of knowledge of good and of evil, okay, that here that we have all the seed or the evil people or the malefic people who are listening to the doctrine of these particular organizations and believing all the things that are pertaining to uh, negativity or the satanic spirit, okay? And I'm talking mm -hmm. about because what they're doing is that they are still preaching cardinal ordinances. All right. And that's pretty much what they're preaching in the Roman Catholic Church. That's pretty much what they're preaching in the Protestant Church. And we have these same carnal ordinances that are manifested within the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. You understand what I'm saying? To where they are talking about progressive doctrine. And what they are doing is, is that they are not ignorantly, but they are purposely calling Yahshua the Messiah a liar. OK, mm -hmm. because they say that they need a birth son instead of the spirit of Yahshua the Messiah, which was written within their heart and within their mind, all right? So just that, mm -hmm. that right off the top right there, and then denying Yahshua the Messiah, you understand what I'm saying, for some other deity or for a birth son or an angel, which is one of these demons that they want to replace for Yahshua, you understand what I'm saying, who never died for them, you understand what I'm saying? So therefore, this is why that they are categorized, you see what I'm saying, up under, uh, Satan's ministers are the three frogs of the beast, okay? And you see how they are in house within this darkness, okay? Now, that doesn't go for everyone within the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, but for those, see, that are hierarchy, that are preaching this progressive doctrine that didn't come from uh, the founder himself, but came from um, another individual. See, and so therefore we don't put names on it because when you put names on it, you understand what I'm saying that becomes iniquitous. What we do is that we are looking at the principles based upon what the spirit is manifesting within the individuals. And that is allowing us to, uh, to, to judge the matter based upon uh, the spirituality of what they're manifesting opposed of, of us judging the individual physically so. You understand what I'm saying? Because we're looking at what they are manifesting um, spiritually and psychologically so. So therefore, if they are manifesting those principles, then we know that those are the recipients who have partaken of this tree, okay? All the way back, all right? They're the individuals who are locked in darkness. They are those, they are the fruit of this particular tree, okay? And they are those who are manifesting that unto the world, okay? Yeah. And so this is the reason why that they are engrafted and trapped within this darkness, so now we understand that the founder of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, he preached for 45 years. And mm -hmm. we take the time of 1931, okay? And then we say from there to 1958 to 1976. And then within that time, what we do is that we look at and we grasp the 45 years that Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley had preached the gospel from the time that he had his vision and revelation, 
all right, which is 45 yeah. years. Now here it says within this particular article that 45 people died, okay? Now 45 people died pertaining to the 45 years that he preached and we come back here, that's picking up a death principle that is applicable to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for a year, a person, okay? Okay. And then we just picked up the principle for a year, for a day when we was over there at the timetable, all right, pertaining to what we was talking about, about the 40 days that the children of Israel were only supposed to be within the wilderness before they had went to went through the divided waters of the river Jordan and crossed over and received their inheritance. But because of this belief, and we know the reason why, it's because the same principles that had happened with this tree, see, and the woman doing what? Partaking, see, of this particular tree to show a form of disobedience is the reason why that the children of Israel did not cross over into Canaan's land 40 days after they had um, heard Yahweh Elohim speak down to him from the mountain. Yeah. And so, therefore, uh, because of their disbelief, and that, that bad report, it turned a day into a year. And then that generation that didn't believe Yahweh Elohim, that generation died off. Now we're sharing with you how that, um, that the anniversary was 90 years. So therefore we have went through two principles of 40. Mm -hmm. Okay. To where we at, 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 at 90, at 90 years going strong. So therefore, since uh, 45 years that he preached that for every year one person had died, that goes to show you how Yahweh Elohim, you need to listen, that for every year that he preached, a person died. Now, when it says over there that the rescue squad was over there fighting uh, the element conditions of dust, and he, mm -hmm. and it says the temperatures were 44 degrees. Mm. So what that does is that brings us here. Let's go right here. Now, when Yahweh Elohim had cursed the serpent, what did he say to him? That thou should do what? Eat dust all the days of thy life. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then when we go over there to John 8 and 44, it says that thou was a murderer from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you are the father of lies. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So when it's talking about the 44 degrees, it is talking about the father of lies, how that he was supposed to eat dust of the ground. And the dust is what? This. You understand what I'm saying? What is man made of? Acid to acid, dust to dust. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, yeah. when we see how the serpent is supposed to eat dust all of his days, what he's doing is, is that pertaining to the scriptures, it says that the serpent, the devil, the dragon, it says roams around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that is in relation to how it is talking about the dust, the 44, and then those that die. You understand what I'm saying? Picking up the principle of 45. So therefore, if that be being said to where the dust principle is picking up um, the physical, and it says that 45 individuals have died pertaining to the um, founder had preached um, 45 years. So you take the 45 years of preaching and then what you do is, is that remember the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. So now by the preaching of the gospel, you understand what I'm saying? Will be a wreck unto the people. You understand what I'm saying? That is up under the dust and the 44 degrees of elements. You understand what I'm saying? To where it says that Yahweh has showed you how one, two, three, how was 111 uh, degrees Fahrenheit out there when they are working. You understand what I'm saying? But showed you that it was only 44, 44, let me go back to the article, where it says it's only 40, 44 degrees Celsius. But 44 degrees Celsius is 101 no, it's 111 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was 111 degrees out there in that hot sun. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. 111 out there. And then pertaining to the dust and temperatures of 44 degrees, that's letting you know right there how that that satanic spirit is going to be destroyed by the preaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Right there. See? And so therefore, just with these principles right here is what we, how that we pick these things up. And it says that uh, to the rescue, it says that at least 17 people, it says remain to be trapped. Now 17, one and seven is the number of eight. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now see, they don't understand that principle. How many souls got, got, got in this ark right here? Eight. So therefore, eight people have to be trapped because why? Yahweh Elohim was the one who opened the door and Yahweh Elohim was the one who closed the door. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See? So therefore, them 17 people, see, are going to be let out of there and they are going to be fine. We already know what's going to be the outcome based upon the things that we look at when we look at the principles pertaining to what have happened, see, throughout the dispensation and ages of time. This is why we come here. So... And then it said this, it says so far 23 people have been rescued. Oh, so it says 23 people have been rescued. Now two and three is principal as what? Five, which is representation to what? Pentecost, okay? Yep. So we understand that 23 people were saved, huh? Why? Because it is principal as five, which is the day of Pentecost. So we know people's gonna be saved and that's pointing up to who? Yahshua the Messiah. Picking up mm -hmm. that 50 principle that we have been sharing with the viewers, how we've been going by those 50 days up until the time that Yahweh Elohim has spoke down, see, from the mountain to the children of Israel. No. Right here. We just shared with you these principles all the way down, day by day, see, and scripture by scripture, picking up here when Yahweh Elohim has spoke down to the children of Israel. See, around this time, right now, see, see? So now what you do is that you take them principles and you correlate them and you break them down. And you go back, and like I said, and you look at that 40 second lecture and you listen to them prayers, see? So what I'm trying to sit up and just basically just break down to you that uh, now Yahweh just gave you your green light, see? To execute on them demons, see? That's the green light right there. That came from above. That was correlated based upon how we give you the ecologies. See, and Dr. Johnson and myself sit up and go through and show you, even speaking another language to reveal to you in English what Yahweh Elohim is saying to the world by the places, by the things that are taking place within his creation. Okay? Mm hmm Now, I just already thought that was beautiful pertaining to, to the name of that hospital. <laughs> yep. Gates of justice. So now we're seeing how the gates of justice now, it now pertaining to the gates of justice. See, these are the gates that it was talking about. It says 12 gates. Mm -hmm. Okay. To where it says that the sons of Elohim have got access, see, in and out of pastors. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I was talking about. And the justice that had manifested right out here was remember when they had built this calf and they had sacrificed mm -hmm. to it? When Moses came and he broke, he broke the tables of stone, see. And he came and he talked to the, to, to the Levites. He says, every man on Yahweh's side, see, stand over here. And everybody who's on that side, stand over there. You understand what I'm saying? Now, what happened the first time, said the ground opened up and swallowed them. You understand? Yep. And then he said that the Levites, Moses gave them the command and says, go throughout the camp and slay every man thy brother. See? They had mm. their, their hand or their part with this golden calf. And it says that 3,000 of them fell. See? Yeah. Now, see, when they went through the camp, see, what we do is we go through the scriptures and we told you, we told you how that the Levites knew who to go kill based upon the people who made this golden calf. Because we understand what Aaron did. Aaron said that he made the women, men, and children take mm -hmm. out the gold out of their earrings. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so therefore, all of the Israelites that did not have on earrings, see, were the ones that the Levites slay. Because we understand that the principles pertaining to slavery, that when they came up out of the land of Egypt, that they were slaves and that they had hoops of gold within their ears to show that they were in bondage or slaves to Pharaoh. 
Yeah. That's how they knew who to kill. See? So see, we look at all these things, we look at all these principles and we go back and we extract them so that we can see and understand what our heavenly father is saying unto his creation so that we, see, can be clear, okay? And try to get a clear understanding on the purpose of Yahweh and what he is saying to us while we were within his kingdom. See, until That's right. he takes it out, see? And so this is how, see, that we stay Okay, obedient. And what we do is, is this how the children of Israel, see, they follow this cloud. It says, bow yeah. by day, mm -hmm. fire by night. That's what the manifestation of, or what this principle is manifesting right here. When you see this staff right here, and then you see how it's dark here and it's light here, all right? And then you got, I, we show, we share with you what that red arm meant, okay, by this garments being red, and then we're showing you that the staff. Now that red arm, okay, that red is going back to here because it's representation to judgment, all right? Mm -hmm. See, And it's going back to the principles of what we revealed to you of what the principles of the veil of the tabernacle mean, okay? Yeah. So the principles of the tabernacle, let's go there. Let's go look at the veils on the tabernacle. Springs is here. And so when we're looking at the principles of the veils on the tabernacle, they don't change. Nope. Judgment as the red, purple being the promise, blue, translation. Translation, promise, judgment. So now you understand what the colors of these veils mean. This is the reason why they pertaining to the veils that you see in this tabernacle and the veils in the sky in the sky is preaching the gospel gospel to reveal to you how that Satan cannot return based upon the coloration of the veils of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. All right. And this is to reveal to you the principles pertaining to even when the high priest, he goes through the veils of what what it means. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See? So. That being said, let us come back and let us begin and to still pick up principles pertaining to the vision and then, you know, proceed on with our lecture. So okay. now what we were talking about our last class, um, we were picking up the principles of the carbonous face of the deep. Um, and we were sharing with you how that, when you're looking at this darkness that's manifesting all around the edges of this chart, that this darkness that you see, okay, uh, is a representation of the principles of the chaosis or the chaoticness that manifested within the beginning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we shared with you how that um, that this darkness was a part of the waters until Yahshua had divided the spirit from the waters, which is a manifestation of what we have right here. Okay. And that's the principles that we have right here. It says dividing spirit and the watchers all right and that's why we have that right here is to show you how that the darkness that's manifesting within the water see had to be separated because that's what kept the gamma rays or the waters see that was upon the uh earth plane that kept the creation pure all right mm -hmm. this yeah. darkness are iniquity all right and so therefore when he separated the spirit from the waters this is what allowed space to manifest all right, and that's why you got this darkness. That's why it's so dark. And this darkness is a is darker than a thousand midnights. Mm. This darkness is the darkness that are within all these individuals. See who worship the beast. All right, mm -hmm. this darkness is in them. This is why they can't understand spiritual things or the light or the things that we are talking about pertaining to spiritual things. And then this is to show you how that is the division between 
light and darkness. This is your light mm -hmm. and this is your darkness. And it's showing you how it is separated, see? And we, being the children of the day, this is us. And just like how John said that there was no need of the son because the father and the son is the light thereof, okay? And then when we look at how all them are in house within this darkness, man, I'm telling you like this, that mm -hmm. when it says that this, that they are reserved in everlasting change of darkness until the day of judgment, that them yeah. individuals man i'm telling you that their houses are their tabernacles man how when we go over to this other chart here and we were looking within the body and we're showing you how there wasn't no movement and it's a straight darkness man you know, you know what i'm saying that that darkness hey man i'm talking about that darkness can't be felt and not only that just like when they're preaching the gospel it can still be felt and you will know you will know like i say a son of righteousness opposed to um, uh, uh, a son of unrighteousness. See, yeah. and one thing, one thing too is, is this, is that the the, uh, the story don't change because no. just how it says those that never lost their first estate, they have not lost their first estate and they won't lose their first estate. Mm -hmm. One thing that I want to say to um, be mindful that this gospel has the power to cast out a satanic spirit. And if one is changing their doctrine from what they formerly had preached, and they are preaching the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, receive ye that one, forgive them, mm -hmm. okay, and receive them unto the foe. You know the difference. You understand what I'm saying? And then a person <clears throat> of reputable uh, uh, preaching of the gospel, you understand what I'm saying? And that person vouches for that one says, yeah, that one was a holder of the Satanic spirit and Yahweh Elam allowed me to cast that spirit out. And it comes from a reputable minister. And then we see the fruits of that individual preaching the true gospel of Yahshua, the Messiah, receive. Mm -hmm. See, receive. Y'all know the scriptures. Y'all know the prophecy. Y'all know the rules and regulations. They don't change. Just the manifestations of them change. Okay? See? So it's like this take those things into consideration based upon where we are but all mm -hmm. those don't change see and, and and out there footloose and fancy free and preaching things that are abominable and blaspheming the tabernacle of yahweh elohim take their head take their head mm -hmm. see and you do that by the preaching of this gospel see because our warfare is not carnal our physical mm -hmm. see we ain't gonna have no physical knives and guns and going out there and doing all that stuff. And no, man, we ain't finna do no drive-bys. We ain't finna mm -hmm. do that. See, what we finna do is, is that we're going to do and fight this war, see, um, spiritually, psychologically, and sophisticated, see, and educated. You understand what I'm saying? To where all you're gonna do is see a, a bunch of room, a room full of individuals in suits, ties, and dresses and Nice, looking very, very nice. You understand what I'm saying? Because they are a representation of this gospel. And what they will be doing is, is that the fight, you understand what I'm saying, will be spiritually so. See? And they will be coming up off of these parchments and up out of that book. You understand what I'm yep. saying? See? Mm -hmm. And the same war that took place in heaven see, with Michael and his angels against Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, and the dragon, and his angels. See, what's going to happen is it's going to take the same resonance and manifestation within the physical realm with people. See, that's what's been ready to manifest. Well, it's already have been manifested. See, so yeah, we wanted to take you and show you uh, those things pertaining to uh, those particular principles. So now, basically, what I would like to do is, is um, uh, based upon the things that we were talking about um, within our scripture lesson, I want to go back and kind of uh, go back here, because that text is right here. See? And puts us right where we need to be to see how we are, oh, excuse me, um, within the holy place where we should be. Mm -hmm. Showing you pertaining to the season, what's manifesting. We're looking at the principles of how that it says that um, we have individuals that were manifesting themselves um, in, at the sixth hour to where we understand that this was 3 p.m. because it was the ninth hour. 
we understand that pertaining to when um, Peter, when he was uh, fell into a trance, that it was the um, sixth hour and it was 12 o'clock noon when he fell into a trance and the sheep fell out of heaven with all these animals on there and Yahweh Elohim told him slay and eat. You understand what I'm saying? So what happens is that when we come back and we look at the watches pertaining to the things that were within the scriptures, see, it is showing you how Yahweh is using his time frame based upon the things that happened with this eclipse here are yeah. the uh -huh. death and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah, which is denoting time pertaining to the watches, okay, and his, his four hours that he have that he used as his timetable. Mm. Now look at these things because we're in Yahshua's kingdom. Now, when he has given us these hours and these times, man, they're very, very important because of the things that happen within the watches. And mm -hmm. also it's based upon the things that the high priest did pertaining to his function within that, that tabernacle pattern that happened within the wilderness as well that happened for 33 years in King Solomon's temple. Mm. What am I talking about? We're talking about the lighting of the menorah, the burning of the incense, okay, pertaining to the watches, all right? He had to go up in there. Um, those times he had to burn incense, okay? Based upon those watches, he had to light the manure and he had to have these things perpetually done every day. And they had a meeting, okay? So this is the reason why it's the importance of these particular things. And so when we're going back and we're looking at how his spirit was poured out in the hearts and minds of men that now within Yahshua, how, how we look at how, when we come back here and we look at how, that when we look at Adam as being the first, the first man, how that he is a representation of the Gentiles. Because when we come here and we see how that the Jews were the first ones to receive um, Pentecost, we have to go back to the rules. Mm -hmm. of, we have to go to the rules of engagement pertaining to the scriptures. Now the circumcision, see, and we come here to Yahshua, which is the circumcision. Yeah. See? And remember, these are the Jews. So the Jews received the gift of the Holy Spirit first. And then the Gentiles received it last. This is the reason why that pertaining to the scripture, when it says the first shall, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Yeah. Do you understand that? Mm-hmm. You do. The first shall be last. Mm -hmm. uh, do you declare the end from the beginning? Yes. Same principle. Yeah. How he declared the beginning from the end. Now, in reference to that, when we're talking about how that the first shall be last and the last shall be first, that when we come to the scriptures, it says that Yahweh Elohim was forming one new man. And we showed you how this was the forming of one new man, okay, in him, all right? We yeah. show you how this is a manifestation of the exterior and this is the interior, but yet it still is one, one new man, okay? Principled as a Jew and Gentile, okay? And father and son, principally, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm saying that, and I'm going over these principles, and we're looking at how this is a representation of the one new man, that when we go and we talk about how that the uh, Gentiles cannot um, boast against the uh, Hebrews because we are the wild olive branch that was engrafted in and this is the tree that we were engrafted in. Now the Jews is a representation of the seeds, the trunk, the roots, the seeds, the trunk, and the top part of the tree. You understand what I'm saying? We were just engrafted in as the wild olive branch. You understand? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying to you is that the Jews are picking up the body. Okay? Picking up the body. Yeah. Of the Messiah because of the 63 generations that he had to come, he had to come in based upon his blood being spilled upon the ground here. You understand what I'm saying? That we understand that when he was piercing the side that out came blood and water. And then we come down here and we see that this is the 63 generations. You see that he had to come through, okay, based upon the 21 uh, uh, generations from Adam to uh, Noah. And then from, uh, no, I'm sorry, from Adam to Abraham was 21 generations mm -hmm. from Abraham, which was 42 generations until the Messiah, which is picking up the 63 generations. 
the father of all living and the father of righteousness had to be two manifestations of two fathers. Okay, picking up the principles of where we were within the ages and dispensations to lead us up unto Yahshua the Messiah being king of kings, creator, creator, father, uh, everything. You understand what I'm saying? Because he says, mm -hmm. he says, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. Okay, and I and my father are one. Okay, so he just picked up everything. All right. So now, when I am making a statement based upon, like I said, how the Hebrews were manifesting the body, that the Gentiles are manifesting the principles of the head because they're last. I said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Now, within the scriptures, it always says that we have the mind of the Messiah. OK, and this is illustrating to you that after we have become recipients of his spirit, that there ain't no other way into the kingdom. OK, and no other way for you to be saved, save in the name of Yahshua Messiah. Yeah. All right. There ain't no other mm -hmm. way that you can enter into the kingdom, period. Nope. All right. You got to come through him. He is the door. This is the only way that you're going to get in into the kingdom. OK, talking about all of this. All right. So. By us having to come through Yahshua the Messiah to receive mm -hmm. everything, it said that we are going to have the mind of the Messiah. If you're looking right here, how we're showing you that this is you because you're in his body and this is your relationship, okay? How that yeah. uh, the Messiah is giving you and teaching you the things that he is doing because you have a straight connection to the Father. See, through him, you got straight access. And so by you having the mind of the Messiah and you see how we're showing you how he is the first fruit of those that resurrected. You understand something after his death, his uh, burial and his resurrection. OK, which we understand that that was the removal and the chopping down of this particular tree. OK, and leaving it within darkness by this axe head which is the representation of the law and the prophets. OK, the law and the prophets. That's why we have the law and the prophets here pertaining to how these wings are touching are overshadowing the mercy seat. That is a manifestation of right here. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, true, the true, the true prophet is Yahshua the Messiah because how we go over there and we get within the scriptures, how it says how that the spirit of the Messiah that was in all of the prophets prophesying of the time of he should come in, okay, to manifest the salvation of our souls. That it was a Messiah that was in them doing the prophesying of the time for him to come in to manifest the same principles for him to go through his death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, there was nobody yeah. but him. And then pertaining to the law, that he is the law. See? And so by him being the law and the prophets, and we're looking at these principles, and we're looking at how these are two, two nations of people, Jew and Gentile, formulating one new man in him. Mm -hmm. And we principles. So now we can understand and appreciate where we are. Now, within the whole scheme of things, within the body of Yahshua the Messiah, no, we're not up here. See, we are manifesting ourselves right here, pertaining to the pomegranates. See, that's at the hem of the garment of the high priest. And so, therefore, these bells, see, are, are, are those who are ministers that are Gentiles that are preaching the gospel. You understand what I'm saying? Because we know that pertaining to the Yahudi or the Jews, then what did they do? They blew the trumpet. They blew the trumpet. Now, the Yahud, I blew the trumpet. Why? Because we know at the end, pertaining to the eschatology, that we're waiting for that last trump. When this angel here, mm -hmm. he blows, well, you know mm -hmm. that it's going to crack open. It's over. See? Mm -hmm. We wait for this trump right here. We wait for him to blow because we understand that the same principles have manifested right here. Yeah. Same principles manifested right here. Mm. And when Yahweh Elohim had the children of Israel come out here, see, to that mountain, says that it was a, long, a loud trumpet that had manifested right here. See? And then says that Moses had prayed and then Yahweh had answered Moses with a man's voice. You understand yes. what I'm saying? See? Mm -hmm. I know that was terrifying. Man, I would have been, I, my knees probably still would have been clacking together. See? 
hearing that loud trumpet going off, seeing this lightning and this fire consuming up on this mountain. You understand what I'm saying? And then it says that the, that the noise or the trumpet was getting louder and louder until Moses came forth. And then he spoke and then Yahweh has spoken unto Moses uh, in front of all the people. See? So that was the manifestation of what was manifesting right here. Yeah. See? So now we understand that pertaining to it, we understand that there was a trumpet manifesting here that on the last trump, that when we come back up here, picking up the same principles, that that's is what we waiting for the mm -hmm. sound off. Okay. And what's going to happen is, just like how we see the redness right here, where he said, let yep. there be light, the same thing is going to manifest here because that is the principles pertaining to what's going to happen with um, our eschatology. See? <laughs> same thing. How was same thing to the serpent. In the end? Let there be light. See? Yeah. Same thing to the serpent. Huh? Same thing with the serpent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See? It's going to go right back to this. He's going to say, let there be light. See? And see, that's when everything is going to roll up like a scroll. See? It's going to roll up like a scroll. It's going to be over with. You understand? So this is the reason why that he tell us. See? He says, stand at my gates, man. Being a good watchman. See? And that's what we're doing right now. See? We're being good watchmen. And we're doing just like what he said. He says, pay attention to the news. You got to watch the news. The news is north, east, west, and south. It is based upon his compass. And that's one thing that I wanted to show here so that the viewers can see and understand what I'm talking about when I say, now this is Yahweh Elohim's compass. Let me do this. Because we want our viewers to see that we have every principle Everything that we're talking about, this ain't fabricated, that we ain't just drawing it on the chart just because it happened. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Now, right here, it says the four elements, the four banners, and compass. Right here. All right? Yeah. Now, this compass is revealing to you how you see how you got the lion, and he's upon the sun right here. And the sun mm -hmm. is showing you, the sun is showing you how that this equinox is showing you the equinox of the sunrise in Leo due east, okay? And this is the age of Leo pertaining to the timeline of when uh, the children of Israel had went to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea at this particular time, right when they was getting ready to come out here and hear Yahweh Elohim speak to them for the first time. Now, based upon that, it was in Leo here that we understand that when the man was being created around the same time when we go back Okay, in the beginning of time, because we know that 1490 is 4,000 BBY, okay? The time frame is the same because that's when Moses was caught up to see the reaccount or the recapitulation of the, the creation coming in. So this yeah. is why it is correlated that 1490 BBY is the same as 4,000 BBY, all right? Mm -hmm. We showed you that. On the chart. Well, which one should I show them on? It don't matter. I'll go here. Right there. 4000 BBY is 1490 BBY. Earth yeah. integrated in water. All right? Because we mm -hmm. give you the time frame of the vision. All right? When Moses had the vision. That's why that's there. And so, when we are telling you about the compass, all right? East, west, north, south, all right? Mm -hmm. As well, that the lion is picking up the fire sign, the man is picking up the air sign, or south, west, and the, um, and the um, oxen is picking up the earth sign, and then north is picking up the water sign. All right, because it's picking up the four elements. All right, the uh, angels are a representation of the uh, four beasts that's around uh, the tabernacle. All right, as manifesting the same as the four banners. Okay, so this is why that we come here and we talk about news so much is because the things that are taking place within the creation is taking place either is either going to take place on one of these corners. 
okay? It doesn't make a difference in what country, what region, or what providence is in. We are just looking at four corners of the earth and how that using this compass that we are looking at the things um, pertaining to Yahweh Elohim and his timetable, which is his calendar. And that's what's allowing us to be um, on Yahweh Elohim's timeline to show his unerring accuracy pertaining to the things that we've been talking about. Yeah. See, and his calendar and his time frame. See, so that within a nutshell is just to reveal to you how that, hey, we live, move, and have our being right within Yahweh Elohim. See? Yep. And that's just to go back here, just like we were showing <laughs> you with the eclipse season, took you all the way back to what? Where to take you back to? With Adam, 4,000 years, 4,000, okay? The first eclipse when the woman was taken out, all right? Yep. A double manifestation of perfection, which was 14 days, and then the Messiah was what? Was put on the uh, on the cross on the 15th day, one day after this. Man, oh, I tell you. Oh, I tell you. Yeah. You know, man, this gospel, man, I'm telling you, man, I'm talking about when it talks about perfection in its finest, and when it and when it says that immutable spirit law, man, when it talks about that, it is immutable, man. Perfect. Mm -hmm. It is perfect. Yep. So, uh, you know, that will pretty much, um, you know, it's a lot more I want to go into, but just for the sake of time, I want to save, I guess, something for the next class, um, because I don't want to just run and then not do justice uh, to the principles at hand. And, um, you know, I want to do everything and give everything is just dues. See, pertaining to the purpose of Yahweh and the things that, you know, that, that, you know, we have been trying to share uh, with, you know, our viewers, you know, and, and man, I'm, and I'm just sorry that this is just beautiful and phenomenal to me, man. It, it really is, man. Everything. See? So, I hope that um, I was uh, kind of clear on, um, you know, the principles and the things that we were talking about. Um, oops, are you there? Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was a accident. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man. I just want to just get um, prepared for uh, for this uh, eclipse, man. I'm just excited. You know? I'm really, really excited about it. Um, and then just to see what reflex uh, Yahweh Elohim is going to have, uh, you know, uh, pertaining to it, man, because, man, the things that happened when we were um, looking at the, uh, the things that happened with the supermoon, man, mm -hmm. just, I don't know, you know? So yeah. I'm, I'm just as excited as I can be to see what is getting ready to be the reflect uh, within the creation um, after tomorrow, man, you know? Um, it goes right back to where it's going to put us, um, where we're going to be, is going to put us back six day of creation, you know, yeah. like before he took the woman out of the man, that's where we're going to be at. We're going to be right back here, man, right here, right here, see, mm -hmm. yes, man. That's where we're going to be at, man. See? And so, you know, when we look at the other eclipse, it says how we had to kill a lamb in between the two evenings. Now, yeah. see, we're going all the way back to where, you know, uh, um, where the woman was being taken out of the man. But in essence, it's just a reflect to show. Remember, manifestation change, principle remains the same. So we're seeing yeah. now, we're going back to the time frame when the woman was taken up out of the sun, but we know that the woman is clothed in the sun. You understand what I mean? See, mm -hmm. you're just going back to be able to see the beauty, you know what I mean, of, of how it was principled as the division of the sexes. You understand what I'm saying? So that's yeah. what we see at in Yahshua's kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? So let's just see what was going to be the spiritual reflect within the creation um, pertaining to that. And we got to go pick up more principles than just those, because, you know, we still got to pick up the principles that's applied. Like I said, to the days of creation to understand what's getting ready 
to be revealed in Yahshua's kingdom because they are all happening simultaneously at the same time now. See? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was basically it, you know, for now. Um, and we're going to see what's going to manifest and unfold next class. See? And then we have something to talk about because um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, go to um, the uh, website. It's timeanddate.com. Um, they said they're going to uh, um, film the uh, eclipse over there. So uh, we yeah. can okay. nice pictures of the eclipse to see, um, you know, that ring of fire, man. You know, I'm just juice, you know, and see what, uh, what happens within the earth plane pertaining to that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, close, man. You know, we covered a lot uh, this evening. Um, yeah. Hoping that uh, the message uh, that Yahweh has sent us, um, I'm hoping that others will see it and to know that, like I say, you know, it's a green light, you know, it's a green light. So, you know, to each his own, to mm -hmm. each eyes to see let him see so i'm going to end um with our doxology over in romans um 16th chapter verses 25 to um verses 27 and they read as follows now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of yahshua the messiah according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting Elohim, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith, to Yahweh only wise, be glory through Yahshua the Messiah, forever, hallelujah. 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 Well. <clears throat> Wow. <laughs> <coughs> well, it's another one. Please excuse me. <coughs> Throat kind of dry. I need to have a little water, kind of parched a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, we know we covered um, you know, a lot of principles again tonight. Um, we picked up where uh we last left off. And um, you know pertaining to what Yahweh had for us tonight. Um, everything, man, hey, right, right on time, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. let's pick up uh, next class, see what Yahweh is going to provide for us. And um, hey, man, let's just uh, keep looking up to him, you know. Um, yeah. Arthur and finisher of our faith, man. And, you know, let's keep following him and see where, you know, see where he leads us and where he takes us, you know, in, in his kingdom, you know, that's the only thing that I can say, you know, so, um, yeah. you know, that being said, man, um, I look forward to uh, next session. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, bro. Well, hey, thanks again for your time. Uh, I love you. Enjoyed life. it. You know, and man, hey, I always enjoy it. You know, I don't care uh, what it's about, you know, just as long as it's Yahshua and he's given, you know, I want to be at the table, you know, eating and supping, you know, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Doc. All right. So long. So long.